right, it's time for another book review. <clears throat> I'm gonna do two books in one because they're essentially the same book. One is just a very much expanded version. Uh, hopefully I can make this make sense. The books I wanna review, first of all, is God is My Co-Pilot, written by Robert Lee Scott Jr. The second is called The Day I Owned the Sky also by Robert Lee Scott Jr. Let me tell you a little bit about God is My Co-Pilot. You might have heard of it before. It was a hugely inspiring book to me as a youngster, partly because of the airplanes and the flying. Uh, he was one of the flying tigers working with Claire Chenault over in China, fighting the Japanese in World War II. The book was written in 1943. This was a time in American history, or a time during World War II, where America was all in the war. Like, almost every adult male was overseas fighting, either the Germans or the Japanese. And the women, and, the women were here building airplanes and tanks and ships and who knows what all. Everybody's supporting the war effort, and at that time, we were getting beaten badly. The morale of the country was terrible, and the country really needed a success story. The country really needed something to bolster morale with some good news. So the army brought Colonel Robert Lee Scott back from China and commissioned him to write this book. It's called God is My Co-Pilot. The title comes from a time after an engagement that Robert Scott had with a Japanese aircraft. After he had landed, the doctor on their base was digging bullet fragments out of his back and with all of the things that a fighter pilot has to manage, especially back in those days where there were no computers, the pilot had to manage the airplane, fly the airplane, make sure there was enough gas, and that the gas, because the gas in the airplane is stored mostly in the wings, and if you take all the gas out of one wing and the other one's full of gas, it's not gonna fly right. So you've gotta manage the gas and make sure that you're even, You've got to, there's so many things that go along with managing the airplane while you're flying it. Plus, you've got to keep track of where the enemy is and looking around outside everywhere. They call it having your head on a swivel. Anyway, the, you know, watching for the enemy and then engaging the enemy and shooting and all of the things while managing the airplane and keeping an eye on where you are. Do you have enough gas to get back home and all of that? the doctor made a comment that that's just amazing that he's able to do that, all of that, all by himself. And the doctor said, you're not up there alone, God is your co-pilot. So it's really not a religious story at all. God is my co-pilot's the name just because of what the doctor said. And it's the story of Robert Scott and his life up to 1943, in the middle of World War II, when America was in kind of despair about how bad we were losing the war at that point. But what I want to get to is my main takeaway. Now before I get into that, I want to describe the next book, which was written much later, which my wife bought me a signed copy uh, signed first edition of The Day I Owned the Sky. Fantastic book, but it's the expanded version. In 1943, he couldn't tell the whole story because of security concerns. He didn't want to give away what the tactics of the Flying Tigers were and how they were able to really dominate in those conflicts in an inferior weapon system like the P-40 Warhawk. Love the P-40 Warhawk. 
because of Robert Scott. It was always one of my favorite airplanes growing up because of him. Now, the day I owned the Sky tells the rest of the story that he couldn't tell in 1943, plus all of the things that he did after 1943, up until just before he died in 1998 or something like that. He lived in, he lived to be 97 or 98 years old. Anyway, it's the rest of the story. The key takeaways that I got from both of these books are the same. So that's why I want to do both of the books in one review. It's the story of Robert Lee Scott growing up and creating a list of things that he wanted to do and accomplish in his lifetime. I'm going to give you just a couple of examples and then tell a little bit more. The very first chapter of God is my co-pilot, I believe, is entitled, I Knew What I Wanted. Wow, you know, I remember being 12 years old, 13 years old, even 16 years old, and talking to my dad, I was really worried because I didn't know what I wanted to do for a career. And oh, now I'm in my 50s and I still don't know what I want to do for my career. You know, I kind of fell into this career that I'm in and it's it's good I enjoy it don't know that it's what I really have a passion for <laughs> but he knew what he wanted to do he wanted to be an airplane pilot he wanted to be a fighter pilot and he at age 17 saved up some money and bought his first airplane it came in a crate he hired an ex-World War I fighter pilot to help him put it together and learn how to fly it. And then on the story goes, he knew what he wanted. He didn't let anything get in the way. There were many obstacles along the way. He wanted to get into West Point, the Army Academy, but it's super difficult to get in. He tried and struggled and it took him years he was rejected, 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 and finally got in. But he got in. No matter how big the obstacle, he was able to overcome the things that got in the way. He met the girl of his dreams, wanted to marry her. The chapter is called 184,000 Miles of Girl Trouble. <laughs> I love the title. It really paints a picture. He wore out several cars driving from the airbase in the middle of Texas over to Georgia where she lived to see her for 10 minutes, maybe a half hour before he had to drive back to Texas. It took his entire weekend, every weekend, to drive home to see her and then drive back to get back to work in time for Monday morning's opening formation. There's a lot of story that goes behind it. He finally convinced her to marry him. The story goes on. One of his goals was to follow Marco Polo's path around the world in ancient times. And he started to do so in, I believe, 1932 but then conflict in Europe got in the way. All the things that were going on, maybe it was 1938, uh, forget the years, I'm sorry. But he started his, his journey to follow Marco Polo's path, but wasn't able to complete it because of World War II getting in the way. It took him about 50 years, but he finally did it. And all of the conflicts and all of the roadblocks that came up, the one that comes to mind is he had to get into China, deep into China where the government of China forbids foreigners to go. It took a lot of doing, but he was able to finally get a special permission for this purpose to follow Marco Polo's path through China. Amazing story. He flew more than anyone. 
they called him a hours hog or a flight hog, something like that, because he would always use up his whole squadron's hourly allotment and all of their ammunition flying and using up their ammunition practicing. In the end, I think he had over 33,000 hours of flight time. It's an amazing story of accomplishment, of adversity, and of overcoming all odds to do the things that he wanted to do. It was a huge inspiration for me. I highly recommend both works. That's what's on my mind today. This book review came to my mind because my son Ryan faces a couple of similar things right now that Robert Scott faced early in his life. He wants to be a pilot and a musician. Now, Robert Scott didn't really have any musician aspirations, but my son wants to buy a specific guitar that he's looking at <laughs> that the retail price on it is about $5,000. For me, I can't imagine spending $5,000 on a guitar but my son can, he can imagine it, and he wants it, and he's saving his money, and he's got a plan to make that happen. So he's got some obstacles in his way that he needs to overcome, and he's figuring them out, and it's absolutely wonderful to watch him work through a plan to get over the obstacles that are in his way to become a commercial pilot and really a professional musician, buying professional grade equipment at this point. So that's what's on Paul's mind today. If you wondered, there you go.